Glen, Massachusetts. He seems, it seems he always wanted to be in the arts because he went to the Rhode Island School of Design, San Francisco Art Institute, and the Massachusetts College of Art in Boston. He's taught a digital media course and an advanced painting. His work has been shown in galleries across the United States and uh, you have this interest in digital art and portraiture and how did the two go together? I don't see that at all. Well, I studied painting in art school but um, I quickly found an interest in digital media because I thought it was going to be the new painting. But it actually turned out to be the new uh, printmaking, which I've been incorporating uh, in my work now as a, as a replacement for etching and lithos. Do you think that is true? Do you think it is the new printmaking? Because Definitely I remember so. when you were talking about it mm -hmm. that uh, everyone thought you can paint on the screen and this is going to be uh, right. digital work is going to be. They call the programs paint programs, but actually they're, they're paint-like programs that are for prints. Robert is Rauschenberg that how you taught it? Um, well, the course um, was specific. It was called Perspectives in New Technologies. It was mostly oh. the history of use, artists using technology throughout history, starting from the Middle Ages with Vermeer and, oh. and everyone else with uh, the camera obscure and all these other things. Oh, I see. But Rauschenberg didn't, doesn't use the yeah, computer, did, does he? Um, well, they, they use the computer to print. He's done some fresco type prints where they've done, it's sort of an airbrush that sprays right into a um, moist plaster that you can hang on the wall afterwards. Oh, but that's not like G. Clay prints. It is like G. Clay, except oh, it printing, is. instead of printing on paper, he printed on, uh, on fresh plaster and oh, made it like a little wall fresco thing. But that's interesting because that's a u different use of materials, and you use materials mm -hmm. in many different ways. Right. You, you, what do you use? I've done, in addition to oil painting and acrylic paintings like this one here, and this is an oil painting, um, I've made sculptures from my prints, in fact. Where Using I've, paper? Yeah, it's sort of like House of Cards type of things where you can cut and rearrange the digital prints. Part of the technology of digital printing is uh, related to bookmaking as well. You know, it's the idea of the unlimited oh, edition oh. Or, as opposed to old printmakings which had a set lifespan. You could only make so many etchings from a plate before it would go bad. Oh, I see. But, but you're, you don't look at yourself as a printmaker. No, I mean, it's a painter, as who, a painter who does prints, yes. Oh, you do? Right, you, like, do you? like Rembrandt or anybody else or Picasso, they, would, they were painters, but they also made advances in the, uh, in the printmaking world. What kind of a space do you work in? Uh, I live in a loft in downtown Los Angeles, and it's, it's wide open, 2,000 square foot space. Oh, so, so you have a big painting area. Right, um, which allows me to stand back and get that distance. And one of the things that actually had attracted me to digital media was the, uh, uh, the scale of it, the way you could work on a small scale or a large scale, all from the desktop, and then print out later. I've done 15 foot prints, and I've done prints of uh, like illuminated manuscript type pieces that uh, but you don't need a big space like like right. the computer versus the oil painting yeah, is totally point, different right? right at one point when I was just concentrating on mastering the digital printing world I had a, an apartment so small I call it a compartment <laughs> <laughs> but you but you could do your work there if yes, you were and doing I, digital right and I, I started uh, some prints that were I, where I realized I could tile it up on the computer and now I've been able to make really large scale stuff, but at the same time, there's nothing like a real painting. These are prints, you know, when you do it I on know. the computer. So now, like on this piece over here, I have uh, this is a 10 foot wide equestrian um, piece done in the same technique, black and white, as uh, we have here. Is it acrylic too? This one's acrylic, yeah. The distorted oil portraits are oil, and in fact, I just ordered some more canvases today. Um, and I have them done traditionally in glue sizing with lead. Uh, I mean, with the uh, oil primer for the high contrast of high tech and uh, high touch. So, so, so they the the framing person does it for you. The canvas well, person. Well, the, the framing person does the traditional um, stretching stretching of linen with glue sizing instead of what most painters use now, which is acrylic gesso. Uh, I use an oil-based primer because uh, a lot of, since a lot of my print work is so high-tech, 
I like to use the techniques ah. of the old masters. So this painting here could have been made 500 years ago. It'll, you mean it has using that kind the of same process. materials? Yes. Um. This is a detail from a, a painting of one of my models. I've I've had uh, over 75 models. Uh, that I hired. I usually take photographs of them and then, then paint the, from them. But this one is a uh, detail that uh, the whole piece is inspired by a Klimt painting. Yeah. And part what, of the... Yeah, go on, because I wanted to know what the process was. Yeah. You, you have an actual live model. Right. I, I do a lot with the live model. But since um, you can get more interesting poses with photographs, I tend to photograph them and paint for them afterwards. Um, when when you do a portrait, mm -hmm. um, like this is the whole piece of that. This uh, this is the whole. I'll show right. this. When you do a portrait, mm -hmm. <clears throat> just like when you did this portrait of me, mm -hmm. what's the process? Well, funny enough, I met you recently, but I had an idea because when I had a show at Bergamot Station um, of my figurative work, and um, I brought in some models to photograph next to my paintings and my prints at the show and so I was re looking at these things and it was a you know it was, it's a striking image to have nudes looking at artwork instead of the artwork being of the nude so uh, when I was planning to come over and photograph you I did a sketch with the nudes looking at the painting and then when I got oh. to your house I saw all your you know the nudes there right the, the <laughs> Robert Graham sculptures that you had and uh, it seemed to be a good uh, combination. So. so it really fit into your psyche, but mm -hmm. you came over with a camera, so mm -hmm. you start, you, you put something I in had your pre mind? I had pre-sketched this out with uh, a painting of you in the background. See, this is a painting of a painting of a painting, as it is, and that's how I Well, that's you. an old master's type of thing, too. Right, putting artwork on the walls and things like yeah, that. Yeah, and, and the depth. And uh, I was happy to find your collection of Robert Graham's there, and it fit in with the idea. The only difference w between my original sketch was that I had the two f uh, models in front, full figure. You could see their legs. But then when I saw all the torsos, I thought um. it would be a good idea to cut off the legs and would also give more room for your portrait in the back, and then including you know, your portrait from the Andy Warhol days. So, um, but so did the, that was way. that in your mind? When you go to a subject, do you get those things in your mind, the way yeah, you're going to do it? I always have a million ideas for um, Before you, know, you even get do. there? Sure, yeah. sure. And, then, but, and you came with your camera, mm -hmm. and you took little snippets around. Right. I looked at your collection, your great collection of uh, pieces that you have everywhere, and found something that I thought would go well with you and well with the work, and uh, took two rolls of film, plus some Polaroids. And and, and then you went back home and right, and I uh, I don't to the I studio. don't paint from a one photograph. I paint from my recollection of the scene. Plus, I use the photos, different photos for different parts of references and things. Like <coughs> and then, does the sitter or the person the the person who's in the portrait mm 